In this video, we'll go over all the in-game settings that you can tweak during your game. With your game open, head over to the top right-hand corner of the screen and click the My Settings gear icon. This is where the look of your game and your audio and video settings are. First up is your display name. Usually this is your name and not your character's name, but whichever you like. This will update what other players see in chat and what's displayed in your avatar. Make sure to click Save Name when you're done. Now below that, you can control the master volume with the slider. This is the volume that only you can hear in your browser. Your players and Game Master will have their own slider for their own browser. Next, we have a bunch of checkboxes. Don't worry, they're easy. The first one starts with advanced shortcuts. I know what you're thinking. That sounds complicated. It's really not. When this is turned on, regular hotkeys that you would normally press with a modifier, like Control or Alt or Shift, they become single keys or sequential keys. That's where you press another key immediately after the first one. So for example, if you normally press Control Shift M, like to move a token to the map layer, you can now just press L M to move the token to the map layer. Think of it like L for layer and M for map. There are a ton of shortcuts you can use and different ways to use them. For more info, check the description for links below. Okay, the next box is for windowed character sheets. By default, when you open your character sheet, it will open on the Roll20 table. But if this box is checked, your character sheets will pop up in another window. This is great for keeping your map clean and organizing your screen the way that works best for you. Next, enabled background chat beeps refers to the sound that plays when a new item is added to the chat, like a roll or a message, a little beep will sound. You can toggle that on or off here. Okay, next we have enable advanced dice. When enabled, dice icons will become available in the chat log when dice are rolled. You can drag those dice icons around and reorder the dice and even drag them onto a map to have a rollable table token of that die. Now the next two boxes are about 3D dice. When you enable 3D dice, Roll20 will have you click and drag the cursor to make your own rolls. Now this is cool. Notice how the speed of the dice is relative to how far or short your cursor drag is? That's not an accident. While some sites use a random dice generator to make their rolls, Roll20 has built a quantum roll dice engine to provide true randomness using a power RNG that is seeded by an entropy source derived from quantum fluctuations. We take our dice rolling very seriously. So at any time, you can check the link below to see up to the hour stats on what people are rolling on our site. Now the next box is automatically roll 3D dice. So instead of dragging the mouse, it will automatically roll it for you. It's worth noting that enable 3D dice needs to be checked in order for this to work. And if neither are selected, dice results will only show up in chat. Okay, what's next? Enabling chat avatars will show a miniature version of your avatar whenever you send a message in chat. And if you're speaking as your character, their character portrait will show up in chat. For more information on cool things you can do in chat, check out the link in the description. Okay, enabling timestamps does exactly what you think. It'll add a timestamp to all your messages in chat. Next, if you're using token action macros, you can sort them all alphabetically by checking this box. This is really helpful if you have too many macros on screen at once. Next, if you have animations loaded in your game, you can enable or disable them with this last checkbox. All right, the next dropdown, you can choose whether you want the scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in on the map or pan up and down. The little dotted box below describes the functions of what you've just selected. Pick whichever feels the most intuitive to you. Okay, pressing the clear current chat log does exactly that. It will clear the chat just for you and just for this session. So don't worry about it going away for everyone or going away forever. If you want to permanently clear that chat log, you'll have to do that outside of your game on the game's landing page. Next is the game setting section. There are a couple sections that will only be shown if you're a GM, so we'll go over those first. The first is the token bar colors and display settings. Here, you can change the color of any of the token bars that show up above a token. Maybe instead of a red and blue color, you want AC to be gray, like armor. That's easy to remember. You would set that here. Okay, next, you can also set where you would like to see your token markers. 
Once you click your token, it's the icon on the bottom right hand side. These are the status effects that you apply to your token, like poisoned or stealthy. You can pick wherever on the token you want them to show up. Up next, if you're using card decks like playing cards or X cards, you can change their display size with the slider here. Okay, the checkbox below is for if you're not broadcasting video. Your player avatars will update when changing the speaker as section. If you find it confusing when players avatars change in chat as they talk as their characters, it might be best to disable it. All right, the last GM setting is for movable avatar slash video screens. You can either set that as player controlled, which means that your players can move around the video avatars and it only affects their screen, or you can make it GM controlled, which means that only you, the GM can move them around. And when you do, it affects on everyone's screen. All right, enough of GM settings. The next two dropdowns have to do with your video feed or avatar feed in the bottom left of the screen. The first lets you make your avatar larger or smaller, or have it just show your name. This will only change it on your screen though. So make sure to tell your players they'll have to adjust their own on their side. You can also change where the avatar shows up on screen, either at the top or the bottom. Now pressing the reset player video slash avatar location button will update your tabletop with these preferences. Side note, when you hover over an avatar name, you can drag it to wherever you want on the game board. Or you can even change the color of your 3D dice by clicking on the colored box next to your name. This is perfect for setting up your table exactly how you like it. Next, we have the video and audio chat options. The audio and video input and output dropdowns lets you choose which devices you want to use for sound, microphone, and video. Now the I want to broadcast to others dropdown lets you choose what you want to share with others, either video, voice, both, or none at all. This option is available for everyone in game. The same goes for the next dropdown. It lets you choose what you receive from others. Again, either video, voice, both, or none. It is 100% your choice. Now, if you made any changes to the video and voice sections of your settings, you might need to reconnect for changes to take effect. Click on the reconnect button after you're all done. This will reconnect your devices with the updated settings. And finally, we have the web RTC debug log. I know you were wondering about that one. If you ever have unique troubles with Roll20 that you just can't figure out and you reach out to customer support, they might ask you to recreate the problem and then download this log to send to them. You can do that by clicking this button. And there you have it. Have fun personalizing your Roll20 game experience.